Yeah, hi, how's it going there, guys? All right, okay. sounds good. All right, thanks. Bye. Most is yours, dude. Is that Steve there? That's Steven. Okay. Hey, Steve. <laughs> All staff, can you please come to the boardroom for a seat for Faith Connect? Please come to the boardroom for Faith Connect. Thank you. Oh, we need. Oh, I guess we oh, no, need no. to make a come on, come on. Oh, I'm, I'm good. Good. I'm you know, it's it's. <laughs> they can hear us down there, so you need to come up front. Mm. We have a little table. Yes. Or they'll think we're fighting at the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't fight. Anastasia. You're Anastasia, right? Yes. Okay. That's a Greek word. Remind me what it means. Pardon? Oh. Resurrection. Steve, I didn't know Jack was doing it from the shelter. Really? Yeah. I didn't know he was doing it from the shelter either until this morning. Okay. But, yeah. I guess we should have been a little clearer with that. Oh, yeah. I got him set up on it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. You see, uh, are you going to be able to center it a little more on or? Like he's kind of just sitting at that table. I mean, we can ask him to come close. That's where he was comfortable. Yeah, I, I would. I would say. You know, we need more more of him there because okay. he's not just speaking to those eight people. He's, he's he's speaking. So we we need his face in the in the camera. He is uh, actually drunk more. Uh, people in the world. Are you starting it off? Yeah, I am starting it off. Okay. You're you're in the minority. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, How that makes you feel. Thanks for thanks for chiming into that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm right behind you, man. Mail needs to get He has like a special little thing that he puts it in and like gets it all ready. He does make tea, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Are we going to be able to hear Steve? Can you speak? Can you hear me, Jack? So everybody. 
I can't, can't hear you, Steve. You cannot? But that's okay. <laughs> can, you, can you talk to him at all? or You should be able to hear me. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, wave your hand. Okay. Well, okay. The green light's on. For some reason, yeah, it's I can't on. hear you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yeah, it's good to have all of you here for our Faith Connect. Uh, this will be a, a first for us. Our speaker this morning is going to be speaking from the shelter. We've done it from Edmonton, and now we're going to try it from the shelter. So I'll be introducing Jack in just a few minutes, but uh, hopefully we can get Jack a little closer to the camera so you can see actually which one of those dozen people up there are actually speaking. Uh, anyways, we, uh, we want to take a moment today. Uh, we have a special guest here uh, with us today. Actually, he's, he's, uh, maybe we shouldn't call you a guest, Gabriel. Uh, you've been around here quite a long time and, uh, uh, and making a significant impact with uh, the population we serve. Uh, Gabriel Chan. Gabriel, would you mind standing and uh, maybe coming up here? Uh, those of you who know Gabriel, he has, uh, uh, he has been volunteering here at the Mustard Seed for uh, many years. Uh, he's a lawyer, and he's uh, provided pro bono work for uh, uh, many of our clients, uh, the homeless and the, uh, the near homeless. So uh, uh, we wanted to just take a minute and uh, recognize the efforts that Gabriel has done on behalf of uh, those people that we serve every day as well and give uh, you just a little token of our appreciation. This is, uh, this is a painting, and it's from uh, one of our community members in Edmonton. So uh, uh, from Johan Nergen, and so uh, he, he painted that, and he... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, which, which way does it go? I, I, I think this is it, okay? okay? Uh, and what, what I, what I kind of liked about it when I saw uh, this painting is that it's, uh, it's, got, it's got some uh, uh, some East Asian kind of feel to it. And I thought, oh, Gabriel might appreciate that. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, anyways, it's just a, a, a one way that we just wanted to thank you for all your efforts, for what you've done on our behalf. So well, thank, you. thank you. I don't know if you want to say a few words or anything. <laughs> so... Thanks, Steve. Um, I, I guess the main thing that I wanted to do was actually express all of my uh, respect and admiration for all of you for the work that you do. Um, uh, my, my coworker and partner in crime, Rachel, is uh, with me today, and she provides a lot of the wraparound supports for uh, my clients in terms of their non-legal needs. And so a lot of times you'll probably talk to her when we're trying to see if you can take somebody back that has been barred or other things like that. Um, but I, I know that we deeply, uh, you know, respect the, the work that you do every day because we don't have to live uh, or be in the living space with any of our clients. And it's, it's a very different challenge, frankly, that we recognize. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, been pleased to be able to partner with the the seed all these years as my whole organization Calgary Legal Guidance. Um, I remember being here when when Pat and Mickey were still here, so that was a while ago. Um, so yeah, we we're really pleased to be able to continue to work with you to serve vulnerable Calgarians. Um, please know that you can always call anytime, um, whenever your clients have legal needs. Um, we have many uh, very professional staff at our office. So I actually, I, where I'm assigned to our program, which serves our homeless or at risk uh, of homelessness clients, but we have our family law team, our immigration team, our elder law program, uh, social benefits like age appeals and things like that. So um, in all of this, we really try hard to uh, holistically address the legal needs of people here in Calgary that are um, poor or marginalized. So, so thanks for all the work that you do and for working with us. So, 
Yeah. Thank you, Gabriel. I, I know you've been around for a long time, but you still look 25, so <laughs> if only I could have aged that well. A uh, few other announcements. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You wouldn't believe I was 35, right? Yeah. Uh, we do have, the, in Edmonton, there's a family day barbecue. Uh, February 15th, yes. February 15th, a barbecue uh, from 11 to 3 for our Edmonton team at the Highlands Golf Club. So uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting time to have a barbecue. But I'm sure you guys will have fun up there. Uh, Break Forth Canada is this weekend, and we have uh, a booth there. And uh, if you're going up, you might want to stop by the booth. Uh, the committees for, from the Best Christian Workplace Survey, uh, we, uh, all the committees are full. And we'll be sending out calendar announcements today for meetings this week. And thank you, everyone who's responded. And those of you who especially uh, weren't able to, we weren't able to place you on a committee, we appreciate your commitment to at least offering. So thank you for doing that. Uh, Calgary Donor Appreciation Night is coming up on February the 11th. Uh, it's a coffeehouse style event in the 102 building. It's right in here on the main floor. Uh, we're also uh, looking for teams who are interested in being part of Calgary's coldest night of the year, uh, February 20th. Uh, we're looking for people, uh, especially if you want to sign up to be a walker and get your friends and family uh, to sign up as well, uh, or to be a volunteer. So uh, you go to the website, coldestnightoftheyear.org slash backslash Calgary. And we also are having a memorial service for Neil Downey. Uh, many of our Calgary staff here are aware of, uh, of, of Neil's passing. Uh, he was one of the guests in the shelter, and he passed away on the 21st of uh, January. There will be a memorial service for Neil this Sunday uh, at 4 o'clock at the shelter. Our, our speaker next week is Chris Knudsen. Chris is the executive director of the Neighbor Center in Edmonton. He's a former uh, Mustard Seed staff member, so we're looking forward to, to Chris uh, sharing with us next week. Uh, this week's uh, speaker is our interim chap uh, chaplain at the shelter, Jack Campbell. Uh, Jack and I uh, go way back personally. Uh, we went to college together, so uh, I'm really thankful that Jack has uh, uh, agreed to, uh, to uh, be at the shelter as the, as the chaplain while Rick is recuperating. Uh, so Jack will be here another, uh, I think, six weeks or, or so. So, um, or maybe even longer than that, I think the end of March. So Jack is the guy at this end. Can you get a little closer, Jack? Hi, Steve. Uh, <laughs> we, we can't hear you, but I assume you're <laughs> wanting me to start. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jack Campbell, and I'm uh, the interim chaplain here at the Foothills. Well, Rick Poltarek is getting better, and it's, it's good to see you all and meet you. And I just wanted to share a couple of scriptures that have been impacting my heart and mind the past few weeks as I've started in this role. And uh, one of them I'm going to have us memorize. <laughs> if you get used to hearing me speak, I always have a book recommendation and a verse that we need to memorize. So the first passage is in uh, Matthew 26 where Jesus is anointed by Mary. And here's what it says. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which he poured on his head as he was <laughs> reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money been given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you'll not always have me. And when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, 
What she has done will also be told in memory of her. In this story, uh, we know nothing about Simon the leper. He may have been healed by Jesus, but he, he may have also been the father of Martha and Mary, as uh, another gospel indicates. Along with their brother Lazarus, they were three devoted friends of Jesus. We know that the woman who brought the alabaster jar of ointment and anointed Jesus was Mary. Both anointing the feet and the head were customary in loving acts of devotion. To Mary, Jesus was the king. And as he reclined at the table, her spike nard filled the room with its perfume and fragrance. And to Mary, there was nothing too precious for Jesus. She lavished her best on him. The disciples, and they were led in this inst instance by Judas, and they complained of what seemed to be a waste. The ointment, they reasoned, might have been sold for a great sum, and the proceeds been given to the poor. Judas and those complaining with him could not understand a love like that of Mary's, which would lead her to pour her choicest tre treasure on the head of Jesus. And to those disciples, it was a great waste. Jesus rebuked these complainers and he vindicated the woman, declaring that she had wrought a good, literally a beautiful work on him. They had always the poor to whom they could and would minister. There will always be poor in the land, says the law. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your brothers and toward the poor and the needy in your land. That's probably what Jesus was thinking of when he said that. The poor you'll always have with you. And Jesus would be leaving soon and giving his life on the cross. So it was Mary who seemed to understand this fact more than any of the others when she was anointing his body for burial. Her devotion was appreciated so deeply that Jesus added, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what she's done will be told in memory of her. Now, what I get from that is the poor some si sometimes identify best with the poor. The other time in the dining hall here, I, I saw somebody collecting about half a dozen cookies. And I politely suggested to them, hey, you know, uh, maybe you should let others get some of those cookies. <laughs> and uh, they said, well, I am. Be I'm just preventing others from getting these so I can give these to five of my friends. <coughs> and I thought, <coughs> excuse me. I thought, wow, that's uh, that's thinking of others. Now he's probably in the minority. There are probably others that took half a dozen cookies for themselves, but I thought that was really touching. Then he was looking out for five friends who weren't there at the time. The other verse I want us to look at, and this is the one I want us to memorize, is Psalm 12, verse 5. Into the hovels of the poor, into the dark streets where the homeless groan, God speaks. And he says this, I've had enough. I'm on my way to heal the ache in the hearts of the wretched. And uh, that's in the message. You may want to memorize it in the NIV. And uh, that could be a little assignment today. As you have lunch or drink coffee with a friend, Look up that verse, Psalm 12, verse 5, because it's uh, uh, this past week, you know, I uh, I was inspired by the day in the life of video on YouTube about what's, what it's like at the shelter here, and I watched it for the first time, and it inspired me to look up a bunch of verses in the Bible about about the poor, and this was the one that really riveted my heart and caused me to, to focus. So... Um, Psalm 12.5 in the message, let's memorize it. Into the hovels of the poor, into the dark streets where the homeless groan, God speaks, I've had enough. I'm on my way to heal the ache in the heart of the wretched. And I, I'd just like to quote, close off with uh, two quotes. One from Charles Haddon Spurgeon and one from Chrysostom. Both these people had intimate contact with the poor and the homeless, and uh, they made some interesting insights and comments about that. First, Spurgeon. 
Helping a person in need is good in itself, but the degree of goodness is hugely affected by the attitude with which it is done. If you show resentment because you're helping the person out of a reluctant sense of duty, then the person may receive your help but may feel awkward and embarrassed. This is because he will feel beholden to you. If, on the other hand, you help the person in a spirit of joy, then the help will be received joyfully. The person will feel neither demeaned nor humiliated by your help, but rather will feel glad to have caused you pleasure by receiving your help. And joy is the appropriate attitude with which to help others, because acts of generosity are a source of blessing to the giver as well as the receiver. And then uh, Spurgeon says this, In due season the Lord will hear his elect ones who cry day and night to him, and though he bear long with their oppressors, yet will he avenge them speedily. And I think he says this because if you read the first part of Psalm 12, it's kind of like an imprecation <laughs> upon the wicked. But then it goes into that verse, you know, God identifying with the homeless and the poor and the way he's going to heal them, the way he's going to heal the ache in their heart. Observe that the mere oppression of saints, however silently they bear it, is in itself a cry to God. Moses was heard at the Red Sea, though he said nothing, and Hagar's affliction was heard despite her silence. Jesus feels with his people, and their hurts are like mighty orations with him. And then uh, I saw a quote from Christoph Stamm. He's an early church father that wrote a lot about uh, his relationship with Jesus. And uh, he said this. It's kind of ancient language, so bear with me. <laughs> Fear ye, whoever ye be, that do wrong to the poor. You have power and wealth and the favor of the judges, but they have the strongest weapons of all the sighings and groanings which fetch help from heaven for them. These weapons, that means the sighings and the groanings, they dig down houses, throw up foundations, and overthrow whole nations. You know, this silent groans. I hear a lot of complaining from some of our guests, not all of them, but some of them. But there are complaints that rise silently and are grievous and hurtful and you know what? They don't fall on deaf ears. They're falling on the ears of our team and God. And we, when we hear them, I don't know what your reaction is, but my reaction when I hear a complaint from the guests is to bear it to God in prayer. I turn that complaint into a prayer. And if we ever get talking, I encourage them to do the same thing. <laughs> Let's turn this complaint into a prayer because God is the one who hears. We can't respond to every need all the time, but these groanings that come from your heart, we're attempting to respond to. And God is adding his super to our natural as we minister to the homeless and the poor. So uh, here's my book recommendation. I gave you the memory verse. It's Psalm chapter 12, verse 5. But here's the book recommendation. It's a book by Robert Capon. One of my Bible college professors used to say, uh, read this book before you die, <laughs> as if it was the most uh, important thing you could do today. In fact, you better do it before you die. And so this is the title of one of those books I would recommend to you, read it before you die. It's called Kingdom, Grace, and Judgment by Robert Capon. It's about his parables. And you know, he coins this phrase called the 4L Club, the lost, the last, the least, the littlest. And in that book, he focuses on that category of people and how Jesus focused on them. You know, no, everybody else marginalized those people, but he is the one who made them his main focus in life. And I know that by reading that and memorizing this verse, we are going to have a Christ-like compassionate response to the plaints, to the cries of the heart of our guests, clients, and residents. That's what I have to say.
God bless you. All right, Jack, thank you. I know you can't hear me, so I'm going to ignore you. Um, let me just read that verse again that, uh, that Jack uh, shared with us in Psalm 12, verse 5. Uh, I'll read it in the NIV, uh, which makes, to me makes a little more sense than the version he read. But uh, it says, Because the poor are plundered and the needy grown, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And, you know, the reality is God does that in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways he does that is through each one of you. Uh, as, uh, as we pr try to protect uh, those that are uh, poor and needy. So um, let me just close in prayer. And then we'll go about our day and all that God has called us to do. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for uh, your word. I want to thank you for the fact that Jesus showed us by example his compassion, his concern, and his commitment uh, to the poor and the needy. Uh, Lord, as we uh, look at the New Testament, we are just so uh, encouraged by Jesus' priorities. And Father, we would ask that you would make Jesus' priorities our priorities. That you, Lord, would, uh, would give us a heart of compassion and a desire to uh, reach out to those that have less than we do and less than many others do. Uh, Father, uh, help us be agents of your love and your care. Today in Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys.